I want to do when I'm last. So, um, and it's intentionally short because this is a, a really a, a summary of what you heard before. Some discussions around things that are happening and in, in, uh, beginning of uh, an approach of how do we sort of address everything you heard before. Um, so the title of the uh, presentation is originally titled just about IFC Open Toolkit, but I think after the meetings we had this week and these previous discussions, we're really starting to talk a little bit more about a technology strategy to support a product strategy. And so some of it relates to helping and identifying and working to get toolkits and so forth, but there's other, other pieces out there, so hence the title <coughs> Open Tools, some of them kits, and that's I do this thing where I find images on the internet that match with the theme. This is actually called an open cat, which is close enough to kit, so <laughs> spelled with a K. It's a perfect mix of things. Okay, so um, the original effort that I sort of championed based on feedback from the ISG was this notion of starting to develop toolkit work uh, or toolkit to be standardized, or not standardized, to be available to be used across vendors as a sort of uh, identified link to the technical standards in a software implementation. Um, that's evolved uh, over the over the over time, but it really points to uh, really a way of trying to modernize how we connect. So not just simply publishing a standard, but also having the tools to implement a standard. Um, but the, I think that discussion over the last couple of days is actually very appropriately expanded to start to think about what user community developer researchers and others get out of these sort of approaches and how those sort of expand. Uh, I guess that works. Um, so if cats can be modern, I tend to do this as well. There certainly should be such thing as a modern approach to building smart delivery of standards. Uh, I'm a fr this is actually a real thing. I wish I subscribed to it. Uh, if you're a cat fan, don't be upset because I am too. Okay, so the benefits of uh, obviously having open tools, um, you know, really helping with modernizing the development process, simplifying the integration with other existing things because oftentimes uh, you can talk about how things work together, but it, unless you implement them or show a prototype, that doesn't mean uh, people can translate those things. Uh, one of the things that certainly come up outside of the request for an open toolkit itself is test suites, example code, uh, all the things that are really needed to, you know, sort of uh, make standardization much easier from a software development standpoint. Uh, and then we have uh, needs around proofs of concepts. You know, we have the discussions around semantic web and linked data technologies. I think people are pretty close to understanding in most cases how they could be applied to our industry. It probably gets a lot easier once you see an implementation that starts to illustrate uh, and uh, make that available in your daily work, work, pro uh, work product. Um, and I think this, uh, the, the other thing that's come up in various ways is it allowing innovation through these technologies and tools at the edges of building smart and not always just at the center. So, uh, you know, sort of allowing things to bubble up, uh, but still get them back into a standards process. So, uh, fundamentally, there's a few threads in this discussion, but uh, the toolkit is obviously the means of uh, thinking about how we work with the developers. Uh, but it's also good to point out we also have thought about this a little bit just abstractly, um, or not abstractly, uh, as a way of working that on the development of IFC doc, we needed tools for ourselves to uh, document IFC and make that task easier. But it falls, in, uh, falls on the list that we have not really done that for the user community to make it easier to uh, add and feedback on building smart standards themselves. So something as simple that came up the other day in the airport room is, well, I, the pro proposal of a passenger boarding bridge. How would we possibly propose that? And I actually have no idea how you actually formally propose uh, adding something like to our standards. So simply, simply as a process documentation is sort of one of the things we have to look to do, or you know, sort of integrate common develop tech, development technologies to support everything Thomas said um, to put it all in one place and so it's clear to our users. Um, and certainly we have these uh, needs to sort of illustrate and expand on the other areas. So I think these are 
coming together to form much more than a, you know, sort of a toolkit for IFC itself modernizes the, the way we work. It's much more if we put together a roadmap for the product, then we come up with a set of technologies that support the product roadmap, whether it's user-based, developer-based, so on. Uh, and that's sort of a very logical way to uh, sort of go from there. Uh, I will say that just in case there's this site stuff on my cats, if you're looking for puzzles or anything else on cats, uh, you could find it. But uh, anyway, to, on the actual IFC toolkit, uh, I just want to provide an update. So we've had uh, discussions of trying to figure out, you know, sort of how things uh, are structured or how they work. But we have uh, initial discussions coming out of the um, ISG. We, there's a team at Georgia Tech that's taken feedback from uh, formally through Autodesk and uh, informally through other folks and, and we're starting to have the process of validating an idea that takes uh, building smart standards that are hosted on a GitHub site, a very modern way of thinking, and making a continuous integration process. That's the early stage of things. Uh, certainly by Paris, I think we could have an update that you know, sort of really talks to how this all works. That's it. For those of you who don't know, Greg always has pictures of cats in his presentations, and I'm probably more worried about the fact that there is a website called Stuff on My Cat. <laughs> the fact that Greg knows it. Questions for Greg? They're hungry. Yes. Which means we're only four minutes late for lunch. So lunch is downstairs. Back in here at two o'clock, please. Thank you.